For today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can paint a portrait using Copic markers. Every time I use these, I'm amazed by the quality of work you can produce. This portrait is black and white, which is an excellent way to practice drawing or painting because it allows you to focus entirely on value without worrying about that added element of color. The set I'm using today is the Sketching Grays by Copic, which comes with five alcohol ink double-sided markers and a black liner pen. I'm also using a chisel tipped Sharpie for large black sections in the drawing like the hair. The first color I'm going to use is the lightest one, which is the number zero. And I'm just going to be using this to start blocking in a base layer of very light gray all over the skin. I'm just kind of brushing it on using the tip of the brush, almost like one of my watercolor brushes. And the amazing thing about these is that the more layers you apply, the more it blends together. I'm just avoiding little highlights on the nose and a couple of white highlights inside of the eyes and just beginning to shade in the very first hint of darker value within the skin tones. I use the chisel tip for larger sections, but for the most part, I do prefer the fine tip. I'm switching now to my number two, which is just a shade darker or two shades darker. And I'm using this to start blocking in the core shadow on the left side of the face and inside of the eye. And also to start defining shapes around the lips and just on the left side of the nose, the eyebrow can be filled in too at this point. Really when you're working with these markers, you just have to start light to dark, which is a really intuitive way for me to work since most of the time I'm using watercolor. So going light to dark is really the best way to do this because you can just build layer upon layer and just get gradually darker as you work. I'm starting to add the first hint of striations in the lips and just little details here, being sure to leave some of those highlights because that'll help it have a really realistic look towards the end as we start to add the darker values. I'm still just using my number two value right now and just shading in beneath the lips and a little bit on the cheekbone to highlight that area. The more marker you apply, the better it will blend. I don't ever use a blender, I just use the markers themselves to blend each other. You can shade in the eyelid and the eyebrow, almost like you would with makeup. The inside of the eye, the white of the eye is not completely white. In fact, it's mostly in shadow, so it's not gonna be as bright as, say, the cheekbone or the highlight on the nose. Just starting to define some of these features around the nose. I use the tip of my brush for most of this, but sometimes I'll turn it on its side if I wanna get a broader mark on my paper. The paper, by the way, is by Strathmore and it's just a mixed media paper. It's very smooth and it works really, really well for markers. So you can see I've started with my number zero and then to my number two, and now I'm moving on to my number four which is a medium tone, and I'm beginning to darken one more time that core shadow on the left side of the face, just avoiding the highlight on the eyelid. There's a really dark defined shadow where her nose is casting that shadow across her face, and I wanna make sure that I get that dark enough, but I wanna build up my layers gradually. I start adding in some hair detail on the left side and filling in the shadow on the chin, darkening around the lips again, Really, I'm just layering and layering. Sometimes it looks a little dark when you put it down, but just like watercolor, the alcohol ink markers do dry a little bit lighter. I'm just continuing to intensify those shadows gradually, always glancing at my reference photo to check my values and to make sure that I'm going dark enough or headed in the right direction. To help me see my values a little better, sometimes it's helpful to put in some of your darkest values right away. So I'm adding in the dark eyelashes and the crease in the eyelid and the dark shadow along the left side of the eye. And this is gonna help me be able to judge the rest of my values and go as dark as I need to later. My number eight brush pen or marker is the darkest one next to the black liner, and the number six is just slightly less dark. So these two work really well for the deepest, darkest shadows on that left side of the face. I'm also beginning to fill in the value within the eye, just leaving a pop of highlight right there in the center. Continuing to darken the white of the eye, but not filling it in all the way. I'm just adding layer after layer, 
switching back and forth between my markers as needed. The lighter ones are really useful for blending edges. If I feel like my dark edges got a little bit too hard, I can use those number zero and number two to really blend those a little better. You'll want to be really careful and slow down around details like the teeth and the lips. The tips of these markers aren't quite as fine as a size zero round brush if you're painting watercolor, for example. You do have to just use a really light touch and just make sure you're not pressing too hard as you get those tiny details in. The flow of the ink is really beautiful though. You'll find that it's almost effortless and how much pressure you apply directly relates to how dark your values will show up on the paper, which is a really intuitive way to color. I'm filling in the eyelashes and the pupil on the right eye now and just filling in the inside of the eye with one of my mid-tones, darkening up those eyelids and the eyebrow. It's amazing when you add those eye details how it really starts to come to life. Darkening along the ear with my number four and then using my number six to fill in the shadow underneath the eye. You can use a nice light number two to just blend out some of those shadow shapes and really help them blend into the lighter skin tones so it's not quite so stark. Adding even more lip details, just layering and layering. I'm using my liner pen for the dark nostril and filling in a couple of the darkest values that I see in the teeth and in the inside of the mouth. For the cast shadow underneath the lip, I'm using the number eight and going as dark as possible underneath the chin. If you want to get rid of some of those streaks that you see, you can use your number zero to blend them a little better. I wasn't too concerned about it. I actually really like the look of having a few lines in it, so it does look like it's a drawing and not just a photograph. I'm beginning to fill in the hair and the eyebrow and connecting those shapes. I'm using my darkest markers, my six and my eight, and then going in with my chisel tip Sharpie to go as dark as possible in the hair. My model's hair is dark brown and curly, so I wanna make sure that it's not too light. Beginning to fill in some of the highlights on the right side and intensifying the shadow along the left side of the face, going darker with the eyebrow, making sure to leave a few little highlights for a more realistic and natural look and then filling in those shapes with my liner. The shadow along the nose is something that I feel like I'm always polishing and refining. Just beginning to add some stray hairs now for an even more natural and realistic look in the hair, and then filling in, blocking in some of the dark shapes on the right side of the hair. You can make this illustrative if you want with more broad swooping motions of your marker, or you can fill it in and blend it so that it looks more realistic and natural. It's completely up to you and what you're going for with your style. In the darkest section, I just fill it in all the way and then go back in with my Sharpie to darken it and intensify it even more, leaving a few highlights within that dark space as well. In an effort to smooth out some of those lines on the forehead, I'm using my number zero marker and again, just blending a little bit more. And then I'm filling in the background so it's not so stark against her hair with my number four, softening some of those edges. And there's the finished portrait. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in learning more about painting portraits, check out these other videos and I'll see you in the next one.